Hey, hey, hey! Today I'm going to talk about what I think are important things to do in Home Assistant. So I'm going to share my 5 best practices in Home Assistant. Let's get into this! Hi! When I started with Home Assistant in the beginning, I was really overwhelmed with all the possibilities and all the options that I had. I just started adding devices and I was just doing things and I didn't really know what I was doing in the beginning. So when I started to create automations and scripts and also custom sensors, there were a lot of different entities and devices in Home Assistant and they were all over the place. So it was kind of a mess in the beginning. Over the years I discovered some best practices that work really well in Home Assistant. In this video I'm going to share them with you. I think that if you use these best practices too, that you will also have a clean setup of Home Assistant. So let's start with best practice number one. Although Home Assistant supports creating backups natively, it doesn't really support creating a backup to an external drive or to a cloud service natively. But there are plugins to do that. And I use the Google Drive backup add-on for that. A couple of weeks back I created a video about how to set it up. So you can watch that video and see how you can set it up for yourself. The link is in the description below. It looks like this. It's quite a simple interface. You can choose to store your backup on your Home Assistant server, but also to synchronize it with your Google Drive. And that is really helpful. You can also download your backups to your local hard drive if you want, and then use that later. So I would say install that. Let's head over to best practice number two. My best practice number two is not to use the default database of Home Assistant, but to use MariahDB. In my experience, the default database of Home Assistant gets corrupted once in a while and then you lose your history. With MariahDB you don't have that. I created a video before about how to install MariahDB, so check that out, the link is in the description below. I would say use MariahDB instead of the default database of Home Assistant. Let's head over to best practice number 3. When you install Home Assistant, then the history of all the entities in Home Assistant is being saved in the database. That might be handy because then you see the history of everything that goes on in your system, but it also clutters up your database with a lot of data that you might not need. But it can also cause that if you're using an SD card, that that SD card gets corrupted because there's so many write and read sessions going on on that card. So it's much better to choose only the entities that you want to record the history for. And you can do that in Home Assistant. In your configuration.yaml file you can add a section which is called Recorder. And there you can add an include line. And in that include line you can add domains and entities. So for instance you can add a domain automation and then all the history of all the automations is being saved in the database. And you can include all the entities that you only want to record the history for. In this way the database doesn't get cluttered up with all kinds of data that you don't really need. Only the data of the entities that you put in here are being stored in the database. And because of that you also don't get so many read and write actions to the database. So this will make sure that your SD card or your hard drive will last a lot longer. By the way, did you know that you can really help me by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to my channel and ticking the notification bell? That would be really awesome. Thank you. Now let's head over to best practice number 4. Best practice number 4 is about naming conventions. When you're adding devices or entities to Home Assistant, you get all kinds of device names or entity IDs in Home Assistant. And that might be really confusing if you have a lot of entities. I use my own naming convention for entity IDs. And that is really useful when I'm creating automations, scripts or custom sensors. Because I always know how my entity IDs are built up. My naming convention is as follows. For single devices, I start with the domain, then a dot, then the name of the room, then an underscore, then the location in the room or the name of the device, and then optionally I'm also adding a follow-up number. And for groups, I do the same, but then I do not have a follow-up number. 
So for example, this is how the lights look in my office. For instance, I have some office spots here, which are called light.office underscore spot underscore 01, 02 and 03. And for a group name, I'm going to say light.office underscore spots. I have the same for, for instance, office back left and office back right. So I have a light.office underscore back underscore left and light.office underscore back underscore right. And I created a group light.office back. I encourage you to do the same. If you use naming convention like this, it's really easy to find back the correct entity ID in your system when you're creating automation scripts or custom sensors. And now, ta -ta 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 -ta, best practice number five. Best practice number five is about trigger IDs. I also created a video about trigger IDs that a lot of people liked. The link is in the description below, so check that out. The idea behind trigger IDs is as follows. In the past, when you wanted to create automations to turn on and turn off the lights, you had to create two automations. You created one automation to turn on the lights and you created another automation to turn off the lights. With trigger IDs, you can do that within only one automation. For instance, in this automation, light toggle office hallways, lights on motion, you see I have a trigger here which triggers when an office hallway motion sensor starts detecting motion. And what I did here is that I assigned a trigger ID motion detected to it. And I created another trigger that triggers when the office hallway motion sensor stopped detecting motion. And this one is called motion stopped. Now, when you go to actions, you see that you can add the choose action and you can say based on the trigger ID, either motion detected or motion stopped, do something. So that's really handy. Trigger IDs make sure that you don't have too many automations in your system. Now, these were my five best practices. I have a lot more and let me know in the comments if you want to hear more about that. And I'm also very curious what your best practices are. Maybe your best practices are way better than mine. Please let me know in the comments. I hope this video helped you a little bit. If you'd like to support me, you can either go to Patreon or buy me a coffee, or you can click on the join button below to become a member of this channel. And of course, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, tick on the notification bell, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.